Here's a quick video of how to make speaker cradles, a little contraption that holds and elevates my studio monitors. Basically, they're just boxes attached to gas spring wall mounts, the same adjustable arms you use for your computer screens. So you're going to start out by measuring your speakers, length and width being the most important. You're going to want the inner dimensions of your box to be about one inch larger than your actual speaker size. This will allow you to glue in the open cell acoustic foam and still be able to fit the speaker inside. This will give the speaker a nice tight fit and also isolate the speaker from the cradle, removing any acoustic resonance or vibrations. Here you can see the gaps around the speaker, uh, about the half inch around the entire thing that will allow everything to fit in there nice and tight and it's all done. Now I'm measuring for the front panel of the cradle and I'm creating a semicircle and I'm using this paint can lid as a template and just creating a half circle to help match the driver shape and all I'm using is a jigsaw to cut it out. So there you'll see the half circle matches the large driver of the studio monitor, and it also helps not block any sound or anything like that. It doesn't obstruct the um, acoustic properties of the speaker. Again, now I'm just using the paint can to add some little rounded flares on the left and right side of the panels, just to add a little bit of, um, aesthetics and appealing look. So it's not just squared off edges everywhere. Again, that paint can comes in handy to make little circles. Again, I'm just using a jigsaw to cut all my shapes. So now you'll see how it all kind of fits together as I knock everything over. And that's the general layout of how these things are gonna work. Sand, sand, sand your edges. I'm using a 120 grit sandpaper. You wanna make sure you get all your angles as much as you can. This is probably the most important part and probably the most time consuming part of the project. But sanding this plywood will make your life a million times easier and really make it look like a uh, professional product in the end. Now it's time to glue everything and tack it all together. So I just run a piece of uh, uh, a bead of tight bond. Um, this is number two glue. And then I'm just using a nail gun to tack them together. Um, the nail gun's basically acting as a clamp. I didn't want to wait and clamp everything individually. So I'm just using little brad nails to, to secure it kind of like a cabinet. The glue is doing most of the work. The nails are just holding it there until the glue dries. And there we go. We're adding the front little piece that we made with our half circle. And we go just kind of like making a speaker box for those of you that made speak speaker boxes in the past. You just run the glue and then tack your nails kind of want to be accurate with your nail shots so you don't, you know, shoot out the sides or anything. And if you do, it's not a big deal. Just pull the nail and um, use some wood putty or whatever to fill it. These things aren't going to be, um, at least mine aren't, <laughs> going to be anything that are going to be family heirlooms. So not terribly concerned. But yeah, just... Hit it all up, now it's all stuck together. Looking good. I'm gonna run another pass with the sander now that all of my edges are connecting. You kinda just smooth out where two pieces of wood connect and helps blend it into, you know, kinda looking like one piece. 
And now I'm going to use some wood fill and I'm going to just um, plug all of my nail holes that I made. So making a na nice flush finished look with all my nail holes so you won't see those at the end. And this is just your typical um, that you would use for base or trim in your house. It goes on pink so you can see it and then it dries white. Um, nothing special you find at any Home Depot or hardware store. So you go around and you fill all of your cracks, holes, imperfections all the way around, anything that has a hole. And now you'll see it's a little bit raised. So I go back and now I hand sand all my nail holes that I did. So that's everything now that it's sanded. Now we're getting ready for some paint. And I just did some black flat paint it's laying around. That's after one coat and painting all my sides. Now I go over, now I'm going over it with some Plasti Dip and that just adds a real nice, um, it really, Plasti Dip really fills in any holes and imperfections. And then I added the metalizer on top of it to give it a little bit of a sparkle and it's not overt or anything like that. Just a little bit of a different thing. So it's not just this flat black looking, you know, I don't know, box. So here we go. Here's the actual wall mounts. And then you guys will recognize these. This is exactly what you use for your computer monitors. And I just drilled holes uh, through my cradles and bolted them right on to the computer monitors. Not hard at all. Just literally drill through, bolt it. And this is adding the foam. I'm using one inch open self acoustic foam. Um, anything that you'd use in your studios, it's an acoustic foam and the speaker will fit right down in there. And the hole in the back is to run the cabling, to run your power and to run your audio cables. So that's how it looks before it goes up. And it's a really tight fit when, with the speaker when you get the speaker in there. Um, you really have to force it in and push it in. I thought that I was gonna need some straps to go up around to hold the speakers in, but mine are so tight that I don't, and I'm not worried about them falling out. And there you see just, that's, it's just bolted straight through. So you just wanna make sure your bolts go straight through. The biggest thing that you have to worry about with these computer screen arms is getting your weight correct, because speakers tend to be a lot heavier than computer monitors. So you wanna make sure that the, that the gas spring arm can actually support the weight of the speaker. So make sure you check that before you buy any of these arms. I'll include a link to the arms that I bought off of Amazon down in the description. But that's the biggest concern is just making sure that that arm will support the weight of a speaker. So you want something around 20 pounds. I think my speakers weigh 15 pounds. So I was able to make them work. And that's how it goes. So, you know, just like a computer screen, up, down, in, out, all around you can position these wet things any way you want and that's how they fit with the open cell foam so that's that's how they are they're mounted up i know that they're um above the listening position which technically isn't correct you can place yours however you like them i like mine like this um for one, it gets them up and out of the way of my desk and my workspace. They're not in the way at all. Um, and secondly, I kind of like that above imaging that these speakers give, uh, the way that they're positioned that way. So uh, it's preference at that point. You can set them up however you like, however you'd like to. But yeah, these things have worked great. They've been mounted on my wall now for several months and neither of them have sagged. I haven't had to go back through and tighten them up. Uh, there's no droop, there's no uh, constant adjustments. I just tightened everything up and they've stayed in place once I got them where I liked them. So yeah, that's it. That's how you make studio monitor or speaker cradles. I hope you found this video helpful. Um, pretty easy job, especially if you've got the, uh, the tools to do it. You'll need, you know, a, a table saw or a skill saw to make your cuts, a jigsaw to make your fine cuts, and then sanding everything down and painting them up. Not too tough at all. So, hope you enjoyed it. Until next time.